السلام علیکم Now we are in lecture 26 where we're going to discuss CSTRs In the previous lectures we have learned how to design plug flow reactor and pack bed reactor Of course we needed the plug flow reactor to crack the ethane to ethylene and then here we needed the pack bed reactor because we need to we needed to partially oxidize the ethylene to ethylene oxide using a catalyst so we used a tubular reactor packed with catalyst and now that we have the ethylene oxide we need to react it with water in a CSTR to produce our desired product which is the ethylene glycol therefore we're going to learn a few things related to CSTR so we're going to take talk first about single multiple in series or multiple in parallel so we talk about CSTR which arrangement do I want طيب. Design of continuous third tank reactors. What is the CSTR typically used for? Yes, used for liquid phase reactions. Write the design equation for CSTR. So you can write it here. You can also start from the general mole balance. It's up to you. Okay, now let's introduce the space time tau into the above equation. How do you introduce tau? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can actually convert Fa0 to Ca0 times epsilon naught, then divide by epsilon naught, and you get tau equals Ca0 divided by minus Ra times x. This equation applies to a single CSTR or to the first reactor of CSTRs connected. And let's talk now about single CSTR. Consider the second order liquid phase reaction A goes to B where minus R A equals K times C A square Write the design equation and solve for X. So let's write the design equation. So we write it right away No need for the derivation. We write the design equation and then we solve for X in order to solve for X we need to substitute for minus R A with an equation which contains X so we need to write the rate law and then use the stoichiometry to replace the minus RA with K C A naught square 1 minus X square. Now we can solve for, well first we can divide by epsilon naught both sides. So we get tau equals such a thing and then we can solve for X. So here we go. Now we have an equation for X and explicit equation of x what do you notice what is x function of okay before we do this answer this question let's express the x as a function of damn color number you know that for second order reaction damn color number equals tau k c naught so we replace tau k c naught with damn color number here and there and there as well so there we go tamam so you can see now that X is a function of damn color number. That's why we say damn color number is a representation of how much X you can get in a flow reactor. Okay, so let's go back to our my first question. What is X function of? You can see that X is function of tau. Okay, so how much conversion you can achieve depends on tau, right? The space time, which represents the residence time, obviously. Higher residence time, higher x. How can you increase residence time? Of course, tau equals V over epsilon naught. Therefore, you make the reactor larger or you reduce the volumetric flow rate. Type. Also, x is function of k. How do we increase k? Well, you can get a better catalyst, right? You can operate at higher temperature. So this is some of the means that you can have higher K in order to have higher 
x and also x is function of c a naught why is that because c a naught affects actually the x or affects the damp color number in two ways it affects the rate of reaction right if you have higher c a naught then you'll end up with higher c inside the reactor which means you'll have higher rate of reaction but at the same time you're if you have higher c a naught that means you're putting so much molecules of a inside the reactor that needs to be processed in order to get a given conversion so it acts both ways Time. then we can repeat the same exercise but for first order reaction you can do this at home okay let's talk about ccrs and series a liquid phase first order reaction is to be carried out in an n equal sized ccrs connected in series operating at the same temperature so we need to find an equation for xi right where i is the reactor number for example reactor one reactor two reactor three reactor n and so on right so of course we get where you're going to get this equation from you're going to get it from the design equation come on you can play at home and find this equation right where damp color number actually is k times tau because it's a first order reaction Play. let's do some calculations at home and jump to the conclusion okay so we said you can do this calculation at home and you get this equation tamam you know how to find the x at the end of each reactor correct you can calculate x at the end of each reactor either using this equation or if you want you can use the design equation now let's plot at the end of each reactor for different so let's, sorry let's plot x at the end of each reactor for different tau k and c a naught in other words instead of having a complex plot let's just say for different damp color number because different damp color number represents different tau k and c a naught right well of course this is the first order reaction so we have only tau and k right so here we go at the end of each reactor at the end of reactor one at the end of reactor two at the end of reactor three and so on okay we are calculating x for different damn color number of course what can you say we say well for given number of reactors for given number of reactors say four reactions and systems or reactive systems with higher damn color number will lead to higher conversion correct because higher damp color number means higher tau which means higher resistance time and also could mean higher k which means higher rate of reaction right what about for a given damp color number well for a given damp color number obviously the more number of reactors you have the higher the x you get but of course when you approach x of 100% conversion or you approach the equilibrium conversion then no matter how much reactors you increase you will get only a slight increase of x but you will not exceed of course 100 percent conversion or exceed the equilibrium conversion right now let's talk about ccrs in parallels okay when we talk about ccrs in parallels we are saying well uh, we could have one large ccr one large ccr where all the feed goes into this one large ccr and we get a given conversion or you can say no i'm not going to have one large ccr instead of having 900 liter ccrs i'm going to have three 300 liters of ccrs and i'm going to put them in parallel and i'm going to divide the fa naught equally among these three reactors come on so this is now how we are looking at the ccrs in parallel come on okay remember vi which is the volume of any of these guys equal the v of this guy divided by n number of ccrs and also the if i not i the feed going into each 
CCR as FA naught divided by n, that n, which is number of reactors. Okay, and obviously when you sum up all the R, VI, you get the V total. When you sum up all the FA naught I, all the V to individual CCRs, you get the FA naught. And here when we say VI, we mean the volume of this reactor of one of the reactors when we say minus ri we mean the rate of reaction inside one of these reactors when we say xi we mean the conversion at the exit of one of these reactors which are arranged in parallel type we now consider the case in which equal sized reactors are placed in parallel equal sides correct okay and we explained what these two equations mean. Right. The question now is, will the x be the same for each reactor? Would the x here be the same as x here? Would be the same as x here? Would the rate of reaction in each of the reactors be the same? And the answer is, yes, all the conversion will be the same. All the rate of reaction will be the same if the volumes are the same. The feed to each of these guys are the same. The volumetric flow rate is the same. The concentration, the inlet concentration is the same. The temperature is the same. So if everything is the same, then obviously the X would be the same at the exit of each of these reactors. The rate of reaction would be the same inside each of these reactors. Right. Now let's look at it from a different angle. Now let's compare the conversion that we get at the exit of any of these reactors xi let's convert it to x the conversion that we get from the one large ccr before dividing it into these three and let's compare the rate at any of these guys with the rate inside this one large single ccr come on and remember the v here plus v here plus v here you'll get v here and the uh, if a not here, if a not here, if a not here equals that total if a not here. Tamam, which is here, the same thing. Okay, so let's start with a design equation for one of these CCRs in parallel, which we have VI equals the feed, which is if a not I times X, which is XI divided by the rate, which is minus RAI. Of course, V i equals V over N, if A naught I equals if A naught over N, correct? And then we can cancel out the N together. We get V equals if A naught times X i divided by minus R A i. Just to clarify the point, assume a first order liquid phase reaction. Come on. Okay, so let's write minus R A I. Of course, minus RAI is written as K, KI, correct? KI, which is K in, in each of the reactors. Of course, you're going to use the stoichiometry, it's a liquid phase reaction, so you're going to end up with this form of equation. So the CA0 actually is the CA0 I, right? It is the Concentration at the feed of each of the reactors. Okay, and it's one minus xi, where xi is the conversion under inside each of these reactors. Right. Can we simplify this equation? Can we do this? Yes, we can. Of course, ki. The ki here equals the ki here equals the ki here, but they also equals the k here because the reactors are all operated at the same temperature. So instead of ki, I'm going to just write k. Let's see. What about the concentration here? I know the concentration here equals the concentration here equals the concentration here, but does the concentration here equals the concentration here? Yes, it does. Because when you split a stream, when you split a stream, you do not split its concentration because concentration is an intensive property. It doesn't depend on volume, right? Imagine you have a jug of full of uh, your favorite juice, right? And then when you split this juice into three different glasses, does the concentration change? 
No, it does not. The concentration on each of these glasses is the same as concentration of the main jug that you had the juice originally in, right? Okay, so then we'll end up with xi divided by 1 minus xi. Right, now we have this equation. And let's compare it to the design equation of, a, of this single one large single reactor. So we have V equals Fa0 over K over C0 and then we have X1 minus X. Correct? This is from the design equation for this reactor. So let's compare these two equations. What do you notice? Hmm. You notice that everything is the same. Right? Which means Xi should be the same as X. Right? Xi should be the same as X. That is, the conversion you get at the exit of these reactors in parallel should equal the conversion that you get from one single large CSTR, given the conditions are fixed. Okay, the other conditions like the temperature and, and so on, the things we talked about. Right, so this proves that Xi equals X. And also you know that for given C and naught and T minus RA becomes function of X only, right? Okay, so for example, minus RA equals K times C and naught times 1 minus X, correct? So for the same C and naught, for the same T, Okay, so the T here is the same as T here. The C A naught, the feed concentration here is the same as feed concentration here. Then minus R is function of X only. And since X here equals X here, then the minus R A I, the rate of fraction here, equals the rate of fraction here. So let's see, what does X I equals X mean? It means that the X achieved in any one of the reactors in parallel is identical to what would be achieved in the reactor where all were all fed in, in one stream to one large reactor of volume V. Yani when all of these feed feeds are summed up and fed into one large volume reactor with volume V, with V here a summation of V this plus D this plus V this and also the Fi naught equals the Fi naught one plus Fi naught two plus Fi naught three and so on. Type. So whether you use one large CSTR or you use CSTRs in parallel, we get the same conversion. So why people do this? Why people, instead of using one large CSTR, would use CSTRs in parallel? Of course, it's always cheaper to have one large thing, right? So when you when you when you buy a large soda, right, the one which is like 2.5 liter. It's cheaper than getting the small sodas, which are 0.3 liter each, right? And so on. Okay, so why people do this? Of course, it has lots of advantages. For instance, you might not be able to build this easily, and you might not be able to transport it easily. Uh, you might have problem with mixing here. And what if sometimes you need, need to reduce the production? Okay, or for example, you want to do a maintenance. In this case, you can close one of the reactors and keep the other two running, so you still have production and well, until you finish the production, uh, the maintenance on this reactor, and then you do the, you close this and keep these two running. But if you have only one reactor, then if you shut down the reactor for maintenance, you you don't have a production anymore. Okay, so with this we finish this segment of the lecture and we'll meet soon in segment two.